Lord, we surrender everything we are. Lord, all the noise. Father, I pray, Lord, that you come and you silence our hearts, silence our minds. Lord, everything that can distract us this morning. Lord, we want to have an encounter with heaven. We want to encounter you. We want to encounter your presence this morning in Jesus' name. We want to encounter your presence this morning in Jesus' name. We give you honor and praise. You are why we are here, Lord. You are why we are here, to encounter you. We didn't come here just to sing songs. We didn't come here to hear about rocks. Not my wife rocks, the rocks on the stage. (laughs) We would like that. We came here to encounter you, Jesus. To encounter the one true solid rock, the chief cornerstone. We came here to encounter you. Touch us this morning, Father. Touch us this morning. We pray for a fresh encounter, Lord. A touch of heaven, Lord. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Thy kingdom come in this place this morning. Lord, we decree and declare that in Gateway Revival Church, thy kingdom come and thy will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You guys can take your seats. Amen. Amen. Welcome to those of you watching online. We're so blessed to have you here with us this morning. Uh, yeah, the kids, you guys can go off to Sunday school, enjoy it, be blessed. Um, if it's your first time here this morning, won't you raise your hand? Have we got any newcomers? <laughs> Any newcomers? Um, if you haven't, if you're not on our group or if you're not on our, um, our WhatsApp and that if we don't have your number and you're not on our group and you'd like to be on our group, please raise your hand for us, please. If you would like to be on the group, we've got some pamphlets and books. Here we go. Can we hand out a book here, please? Um, anyone else want a free book? Yeah, there's a pen inside and it's for free. You want one? Put up your hand. Gary will hand it out to you. Amen. Amen. We've uh, made little nice little booklets so we can advertise. And you'll see in that little pack, there's a pack of scriptures. It's a business card on the one side with Gateway Revival Church on. And the other side is a scripture. So use them, hand them out. And uh, we trust that there'll be an evangelism tool that we can use. Um, I've got a whole lot. We'll start handing them out next week. I'll give you all one. Um, a pack. And then by the next week, Sunday, I want you to bring me an empty packet so that we've at least touched. I think there's five cards in a pack I think we put. So you would have at least have handed out five cards. Amen. Amen. Why don't you turn and greet your friends? Just say hello to the person standing next to you. Tell them it's good to be here this morning. Amen. Amen. We just have a, a few announcements. Or one announcement, two announcements. Anton Akari will be back on the 16th of June. So save the date. Don't go on holiday. I know there's a long weekend that weekend. I think on the Thursday. Um, Another quick one. We've moved our prayer to Thursday nights. So no more Wednesday night prayer, Thursday night prayer. We did it specifically so when Anton and Corrie come, they're in here on a Thursday. So they can be with us in prayer on a Thursday night as well. So amen. So we, we're trusting that we're going to encounter God every Thursday night now. Amen. Amen. Um, Chad, why don't you put that post up there, please? Guys, don't forget, it's the men's conference next weekend with Gary Numiji and Gary Numiji, yes. And um, it is 200 Rand per person, I believe. You need to bring a bag of wood, that's part of your entry fee. It's men only, sorry, ladies. But uh, men, ladies, if you want your man to be changed, kick them out of the house, chase them down the road, put them in the car with a bag of wood and 200 bucks and they'll come back totally changed. I promise you it'll be the best. The best 200 rand you've ever spent in your life. I promise you that. The men go there for a fresh encounter with God. It's a time where they can, we can put everything aside, put all the noise aside, camp out with fellow like-minded men and I promise you a testimony from every man sitting in this room that has been to one of those camps. It is life-changing. You will encounter God. Amen. Amen. We, can, we, can, we can rest assured on that. Amen. Um, was there anything else? Chad, are there any other? No, just the word. Amen. Last week, uh, yes, Anton and Corey were here, and um, I think Anton sp- yeah, he spoke a little, bit about, well, about, uh, a little bit about the walls of Jericho. And the week before, remember, I spoke about sticks. Or, or um, we, we, we used sticks to portray the story from going from ordinary to extraordinary. And God can use what you have in your hand. 
God doesn't need us to be spectacular or special in any way. He can use you just the way you are with what you've got right now. It's like we always say, you'll never be ready for a baby. You'll never be ready. You'll never be ready to get married. Guys, you'll never be ready to stand up into what God's called you because we'll always feel inadequate. Because when God shows us something, it's normally massive. It's normally bigger than we can even fathom. And then we, we kind of retract and we say, no, but wait, I'm not ready. Let me tell you this morning, if you don't take the step, you'll never be ready. You'll never be ready. You just kind of have to do it. You just have to do it. You just have to, like when you're married, when you ask, you just got to do it, eh, Ari? You just got to do it. Otherwise, you'll never be ready. God will put the spectacular in you. You don't need to be spectacular. When he touches you, he'll put the spectacular in you. When we have a moment, when we, when we encounter Jesus, when we say, Lord, I, wanna, I just want to give you everything today. I'm sick and tired of trying to do things my own way. And when we say, God, I just want to give it all to you today. I promise you that bag of cement that you've been carrying on your back, you can just literally just drop it off. Because he'll carry it for you. He'll put the glory in you. Malcolm was saying this morning that, that light that, sh- that he saw shining into the church. God will shine his light upon you. And I promise you guys, you'll never be the same. When we really, truly surrender unto him. Look, it's easy to sit here. It's easy to, to come and listen to the word. But when you truly surrender. Like when, I was, when, I was praising, when I was in praise and worship this morning, when I was singing that song, and we're singing that love song. You know, it made me think of, of when, I, when I pour out. When, you know when you, when you really want to pour out your love and you almost you feel it from the inside. Words are cheap. Words are cheap. It's easy to say something. It's easy to say something. It's easy to sing, I love you, Lord. But are you singing it from, from the inside? Are you singing it like you mean it? Can you imagine writing any of us, any of us not ever written a love letter? Has anyone not ever written a love letter? Everyone has, eh? Think about when you write a love letter. You, you, you stop, you slow down. And you really, you, you want to write it from here. And normally when the person reads it, they can feel it. Isn't that amazing? Don't you want to sing and praise God from here so that you know that he feels it? God knows. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows, he knows what we're doing. He knows what you're thinking. But if, if you do it from here, ima- can, you imagine, can you imagine the look on his face when he knows you're singing it from here? That's what God wants. That's what he desires from each and every one of us. We need to pour out our love to him. And he will put the spectacular into each and every one of us. So this morning, I want to speak to you about some rocks. As you can see, I've got a few rocks on the stage. And I want to read to you out of Luke 19, 37 to 40. Chad will put it up on the screen. Then as he was now drawing near the, uh, near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees, Pharisees called him from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered and he said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. So I want to ask you a question this morning. Can a rock speak? Can a rock speak? You know that throughout the Bible there were rocks? In just about all the Bible stories there were rocks, there were, there were stones that were involved in those stories. And can you imagine this morning how absolutely awesome it would be to actually hear what those rocks had to say. Could you imagine the, rocks, the rock actually testifying to you what they experienced or the story from their point of view? Because somewhere hidden in the sands of time, probably buried under six foot of sand in Israel, there's a rock that was there. When those stories were written, there was a rock that was there and it was listening. And the Bible says that if the disciples did not praise the Lord, the rocks would cry out. 
I want to tell you this morning that if we don't stand up and we don't praise the Lord, there is a rock that is going to cry out. There's a rock that will tell the story. So I want to start with the first rock this morning. I want to start this morning with Jacob's rock. Jacob's rock. Everyone know the story about Jacob's rock? In Genesis 28, we hear about the first rock in the Bible. Genesis 28, 18. Then Jacob arose early in the morning and he took the stone that he had put at his head. And he set it up as a pillar. And as you can see, I tried to pour oil on it. Can you see the... I poured oil on the rock. And he poured oil on the top of it. And Jacob was running from his brother Esau. And he had 600 assassins after him. You remember? They were trying to kill him. And he was distressed and he was like in a really bad place. And Jacob laid down his head on the rock. And what happened? God gave him a dream. When Jacob put his head on the rock, God gave him a vision. He gave him an anointed dream. A vision, the vision that he got was a ladder coming down from heaven. And God was showing him angels ascending and descending. And if the rock could speak, what would the rock say? I will never forget it. I need to interview the rock. Where's the mic? Let's do this. Hey, rock. What would the rock say? What would the rock say? I'll never forget it. It was early in the morning. And Jacob got up. And you wouldn't believe what happened when he got up. He took me. He took me because God gave him a dream in the night. He took me and he poured oil on me. He poured oil on me because God gave him an anointed dream. Even though he was lost, even though he was in trouble, even though he was in a place that he was so confused, even though he didn't have anything, he laid his head on me and God gave him an anointed dream. In that spot, in that moment when he laid his head on the rock, God spoke to him. God spoke to him when he laid his head on me. Where's the kids? They'd love this. (laughs) The rock is testifying to you this morning that if you're ever in a bad place, it doesn't matter where you are, it doesn't matter what you're facing, it doesn't matter what mountain is in front of you, there is a God in the middle of your situation. No matter what is going on, He can give you an anointed dream. God can speak to you when you lay your head down, when you stop running and surrender. When did God speak to him? When he laid his head on me. When he slowed down. How many of us need to slow down in the season? How many of us are running and running and running? And we don't slow down to wait and to stop and to rest our heads. Maybe not on a rock but on a pillow. Just to slow down. To ask God what he wants to say. Because wow we can talk a lot isn't it? Lord, I need this. Lord, bless this day. Lord, bless my kids. Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over my family. Lord, I pray that you bless my business. Lord, go with me to work. Lord, bless my car. Get me there safely. Lord, do this. Lord, 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 Lord. But I don't wait to hear what the Lord wants to say to me. I don't know why I'm speaking into the mic. (laughs) I want to tell you this morning, Lord, the rock's going to tell you that God can give you an anointed dream. He can give you an anointed dream. He can open up up the books. He can open up heaven and he can show you the plans and the purposes that he has for each and every one of your lives. I want to tell you this morning that if God has given you an anointed dream, the rock's testifying. If God has given you an anointed dream, you wouldn't be where you are. You wouldn't be who you are. It could have happened to anyone. It could have happened to anyone, but God chose you. And God spoke to you. He poured out oil into your life. He gave you a dream. He gave you a talent. He gave you a gift. When you know you've got a gift, what do you do with it? You use it. Yeah, you unwrap it, you open it, and then you use it. If I give my child a present, and is he, gonna, is he not going to take it out of the box and play with it? No. 
He's going to take it out and he's going to play with it. He's going to use it. He's going to make use of it. We need to make use of the things that God has poured out into our lives. Those anointed dreams that God has put in your head where God has spoken to you and he said you're going to be something and you're going to be someone. You need to activate that this morning in Jesus' name. When you have a prophetic word over your life, you need to grab those things. You need to write them down and you need to say, Lord, this is where I am going. I don't know how I'm going to get there. But this is where I'm going. And that is where I want to be. Amen? Amen. If we don't praise God, you know, marry, to marry the right person, to marry the right person is an anointed dream. To find a good wife, to find a good husband is an anointed dream. I need to put this down. <laughs> the rednecks rock will testify now. If your children are healthy... To have children, that's an anointed dream. To have a roof over your head, to have a car and a family, to be able to come to church this morning, that is an anointed dream. If you won't praise God for the things that he has already done in your life, I'm telling you that there's somewhere in the sands of time in in Israel, there's a rock that will praise him. There's a rock that will praise him. God can you can cause ladders to be established for prayers to go up and miracles to come down. That is what happened when he laid his head on the rock. Miracles, the prayers went up, his thoughts went up, he released everything. It went up and the angels came down. God wants to come down and he wants to encounter you in every area of your life. The altar you build will cause the glory and the power of God to be available to you. You know that we build a prayer altar when we pray. You build a personal prayer altar when you pray to God. And the stronger your prayer altar is, the more you can expect. The stronger your prayer altar is, the more you can expect God to come through for you. The more you pray for, the more likely God is to answer those prayers because I'm praying them. And I'm building that prayer altar. And the more I build my prayer altar, the stronger it will get. Amen? Amen. Have you ever experienced the anointing of God on your life? Has God ever spoken to you? Has God ever given you an anointed dream? If you don't want a rock to take your place, then I suggest that right now we just give God a hand. If you don't want a rock to take your place, then you need to give God a praise. You need to say to God, thank you, Lord, for what you have done in my life. You need to praise him for what he has done. Otherwise, there's a rock that's going to praise him. He has another rock. I'm going to leave the mic this time. He has another rock. I'll interview him from my lapel. (laughs) If the rock could talk, if Moses' rock could talk, it would tell a story. And it would go a little something like this. I was in a I was in a hot place. It was hot. And it was barren. And there was nothing. And it was dry. And there was wind and there was sand in my face. And I was lying there and I was almost felt half dead because the place was dead and dry. And then suddenly Everyone say suddenly. Suddenly, I felt the ground begin to shake. I felt the ground begin to shake. And all the little pebbles around about me began to shake. Can you imagine? Can you see the story? The little pebbles. I want you to imagine it in your mind. The little pebbles begin to shake. And I heard the footsteps. And the ground started to rumble. And I heard the voices of people coming. But they were mumbling. And they were groaning. And they were moaning. And they were saying, we were probably better off in Egypt. We should come back from whence we came. And they were saying, we're hungry and we're thirsty and there's nothing to drink. And there's no provision for us in this place. And it was at that moment that an old man with a stick named Moses walked over and he hit me with a stick. And then suddenly, on the inside of me, I felt something bubbling. I felt something, something coming up on the inside of me. I felt it. I felt it. Because when he hit me with that stick, 
It says in Numbers, verse 20, uh, Numbers 20 verse 10, And Moses and Aaron gathered, and they assembled together before the rock. And they said to them, Here now, you rebels, must we bring water out of this rock? And this is what he was saying. Then Moses lifted up his hand, and he struck me twice with his rod, and water came out abundantly. The water came out of me. It gushed out from the inside, and it became like a river. And so help me God. The water started gushing out of me, and suddenly the desert became a river. And I'm here to testify to you this morning that it doesn't matter how dry or how barren your situation may look. God can provide all of your needs. Even if you feel like you're in the middle of a desert or you're in the middle of a wilderness and even if you feel that God can't do it for you, there is a God. In Philippians 4.9 it says, And my God will meet all your needs according to his riches and glory in Jesus Christ. And he can give you beauty for ashes. He can give you water in the middle of your desert place. God can give you a vision no matter how dried up things may look. And if you won't praise him for the provision that he has already poured out into your life somewhere in a desert, in Israel, buried underneath the sands of time, there is a rock that will cry out, that will glorify Jesus for what he has done. Jacob's rock speaks about anointed dreams and Moses speak, Moses' rock speaks about provision in a desert place, water in a dry place, refreshing when we are dry and thirsty. God can pour out his refreshing upon our lives. And if we won't praise him, there's a rock that will. Amen? Amen. Amen. We need to praise God. Amen. Give God a praise. Next one, Joshua's rock. What would it say? Well, I was just sitting there, up on top of the walls of Jericho. I was just sitting there and minding my own business. I was one of the parts, I was a rock that was a part of the resistance of God's people entering into the promised land. I was put there to block them and to stop them. And we heard the story last week that they were marching around for six days and they marched around the walls and the people were laughing at them. And when the people shouted, suddenly all the rocks started shaking. All the rocks around about me that was mortared and, and cemented together started shaking and they all started tumbling to the ground. And it says in Joshua 6.20, so the people shouted when the priests blew their trumpets and it happened, remember Harry blew his trumpet last week and you could feel the power of God in this place and when God's people shouted and the trumpets went off and it happened that the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the walls fell down flat then the people went up into the city every man straight before him and he took the city and the rocks would tell you today, this rock I'm telling you today, that God will tear down every resistance in your life, every wall that has tried to block you or to stop you, walls that try to shut you out, walls that try to stop the way where God wanted you to go in your life, every wall that try to contain you. I want to tell you this morning that everything that has tried to stop you Walls that have told you that you cannot be redeemed. Walls that have told you that you cannot have a relationship with your son or your daughter. Walls that have told you that it's not going to happen. Walls that have told you that there's no way back. That you can't forgive that person. Walls that tell you that you can't move forward. Walls that deny you. Walls that defy you. 
Walls that tell you that you will never move. Walls that tell you that your situation will never change. There is a God who can tear down every wall in your life today. I decree and I declare this morning that every demonic wall that, is, that the enemy has erected over your life will be broken right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Every roadblock that the enemy has put in your path be broken in Jesus' name. Rock scatter. In Jesus' name. I don't care how thick that wall is. The Bible says that that wall was impenetrable. I don't care how high the walls may look in your situation. My God is bigger than any possibility in your life. Any impossibility in your life. My God is stronger. And He knows how to level the walls of resistance in your life. Every wall of poverty, every wall of turmoil, the walls of division in your family, the walls that have gone up between you and somebody that you love. God can break down those walls. And in the name of Jesus, I decree that walls will fall in Jesus' name. Walls will fall when we shout out to God and we praise Him and we open our mouths and we praise God for what He has done. Don't let a rock cry out. Don't let a rock cry out when we praise God for all that he has done and all that he is going to do. They walked over me. They walked straight over me because the God of Israel breaks down walls. Amen? Amen. That's Joshua's rock. Amen. Who's next? Who's next? Let's pick up the little one. Can you all see? David's rock. David's rock. There I was. There I was. Just lying in the bottom of the brook. And I had so many rough edges. And I was rough. And I was sharp. And I was pointy. And then over time, the waters would come. And they would push me from side to side. To and fro. They were flipping me around and tossing me and working me and molding me almost like clay. And I was, I was rough. Every inconsistency in my life was being pressed. And the brook sorted me out. All the ups and downs, all the anger, all the bitterness, all the hurt, all the addiction, it started breaking off. God started moving. And I ended up a smooth little stone laying in the bottom of a brook. And then it happened. That faithful day. Remember the stones testifying. I will never forget that faithful day when the shepherd came and he picked me up. And I want to testify that out of all of the stones that were lying in the brook that day, God chose me. He picked me. Me, out of all the stones that were there, the shepherd came, he stood into the brook, and he picked me up. There were stones next to me that were better looking. There were stones next to me that were smoother than I was. There were stones next to me that were prettier than I was. But he picked me. He picked me. He picked me. But for some reason... The hand of the shepherd reached down into the brook. And I won't forget it. I won't forget it. When his hands wrapped around me, he picked me up. He picked me up. And he put me into a slingshot. And when he was swinging me around, all I could think that, oh Lord, here it is. It's my time. I've been chosen. This is my destiny moment. God is going to use me for something And I was released out of that slingshot and I went hurling through the air. Can you imagine? And I was getting dizzy, man. But I was flying. And suddenly, I remember seeing a monster of a man. His head was ten times the size of me. But I was hurling. I was flying. When David let me go, Uh, The inertia, the velocity that I left that slingshot with. I could feel my hair being blown back. And I was hurling towards his face. 
that Philistine giant, and his name was Goliath. And when I hit him, I hit him square between the eyes, and I destroyed him. And it says in 1 Samuel 17, 49, Then David put his hand in his bag and he took out a stone. That's me. That's me. And he slung it and he struck the Philistine on his forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the earth. I want to testify to you this morning that my God still kills giants in people's lives. Amen? Come on, I can't hear you. Giants of impossibility. Giants of cancer. Giants of addiction. The giants of fear and depression. The giants of immorality. That giant of Babylon. The giants of sin. And the giants of shame. There is a stone that, can, that God can anoint and he can pick and he can choose and he will bring down every giant in your life this morning. I want to tell you this morning and I want you to say, God chose me. Amen. Tell the person next to you, God chose me. Amen. There was a lot of stones in the brook that day. But God chose you. And that's why you're here this morning. Because God chose you. The Bible says, for many are called, but few are chosen. He chose you. He picked you. You were handpicked. I want to testify and say to you this morning, I want to say thank you, Jesus. What an honor. It is to stand up here and represent him. What an honor it is to stand up here and represent the King of Kings. What an honor it is to stand there and sing, I love you, Lord, to preach, to serve, to sit in God's house. What an honor it is to work on the sound desk. What an honor it is to stand outside and greet people at the door. What an honor it is to park cars. What an honor it is to make coffee. What an honor to be able to say Jesus loves you to a friend. What an honor to help a person out of a pit. I want to tell you this morning that God chose you. He chose you for such a time as this. And we need to be in church. We we need to be in church. We need to be in a place where we can get unstuck. We need to be in a place where, where we can hear a word from God that can get us unstuck out of our situations. We don't want to go through life being stuck in the mud. We need to come in here and get fresh instructions from heaven. That's why the word that comes forth has the power to break yokes and to comes with an anointing to move in your life. The word that comes from the pulpit has authority to set you free in Jesus' name. When we come, we get filled with the word of God for our lives and we can get unstuck. Can you imagine? He probably felt stuck in that brook pushed together, hard pressed from every side with rocks all around him. And I want to tell you this morning that God has a destiny for each and every one of your lives. And this little rock is testifying to you this morning that giants still fall. Turn to the person next to you and tell them that giants still fall. Tell them again, giants still fall. Amen. In Jesus' name. This one was hard. That one was easy. This one is hard. This one's tough. Here's another rock. Here's the rock from the man that was in between the tombs. And this one has blood on it. This one's been marked. I am the rock that was in the hand of the demon possessed man. I would hear him at night. I would hear him. I would hear him screaming. I was just lying outside. But I would hear him screaming. He was being tormented by a legion of demons. And he would tear off his clothes. And it says in Mark 5, Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gardeans. 
And when they had come out of the boat immediately, they, they, there they met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and no one could bind him, not even with chains because he had, been, he had often been bound with shackles and chains and the chains had been pulled apart by him and the shackles broken into pieces. Neither could anyone tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. Demons were tormenting him. And when they were tormenting him and he couldn't take it anymore, he would pick me up and he would cut himself. He would cut himself all over. He, would, he hated himself so much that he would cut himself. He would shoot himself up. He would drink himself into a stupor. He couldn't handle the situation. He couldn't handle where he was at. And I have blood on me because he tried to cut himself while he was amongst the tombs, the graveyard. No man could tame him. No counselor could fix him. No program could turn him around. Oh, but one day, one day on that faithful day, I want to testify to you this morning that a man from Galilee got out of a boat and when he got out of that boat suddenly suddenly while the man was still cutting himself having me in his hands when that man got out of that boat and he walked up to me I fear the man that well he had me in his hand he fell to his knees bleeding and tormented torn up by the demons fell on his knees and he began to worship the man from Galilee. I want to tell you this morning that when you fall to your knees, everything changes. When you fall to your knees, every situation that you may face changes. And when he did, when he fell to his knees, Jesus began to cast demons out of him. And when they saw, and then they, when Jesus cast the demons into the swine, he got up and he was clothed and he was in his right mind and he took me and he threw me to the floor. Because he wasn't being tormented anymore. Never to pick me up again. And this rock wants to testify to you this morning that there is a God who can deliver you from demons, who can deliver you from a path of destruction, who can deliver you from suicide, who can deliver you from every dark addiction that is killing you slowly in your life. Sorry, I'm baptizing my iPad now. There is a God that can do all things, no matter how bad it may look. No matter how dark your situation, no matter the tombs that are encamped around you, there is a God and there is a man from Galilee who can set you free. Amen? Amen. Amen. Maybe you felt this morning that you couldn't take it anymore. How many of us were under the curse of sin and shame and condemnation at one point in our lives? How many of us have had Satan have a grip on us and have had God intervene? When God came into your situation, when you fell to your knees, he delivered you. When you fell at his feet, he delivered you. And if you won't praise him, there is a God somewhere lying near a graveyard. I mean a rock lying somewhere near a graveyard in Israel. That will testify that God can deliver you. And if you won't praise him, there is a rock that will. Because him who the sun sets free is free indeed. Amen? Amen. I want you to clap your hands right now. If Jesus has set you free, stand up out of your chair this morning. If you've been set free, give God a shout. Come on, raise your voice to him this morning. Religion couldn't do it, but God can set you free. A preacher can't do it. A song can't do it. But the name that is above every other name, church couldn't do it. 
but Jesus. That man from Galilee can set you free. You're not too far gone. There is no person that he cannot reach, no soul he cannot save. He will save you this morning. No wall that he cannot break. No marriage he cannot restore. No sickness he cannot heal. No prodigal he can't bring home. None can withstand. None can resist that man from Galilee. Amen. You can take a seat. Last one. It is the last one. Who are you? Who are you? I am the stone of forgiveness. I am the stone of forgiveness. I was there. I was there that faithful day when that woman was caught in the very act of idolatry. I was there. I was there. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, teacher, speaking to Jesus, this woman was caught in idolatry in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such people should be stoned. But what do you say? This they said, testing him that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and he wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. She was unredeemable. There was no way back. The law said that she shall be stoned. And they threw her at the feet of Jesus and with stones in their hands My stone friends were in the hands of the Pharisees and they couldn't wait to release the rocks. And they charged Jesus with a statement. Moses and the law says, stone her. Stone her. For her sexual immorality, she shall die in shame. She will die in guilt. She will die always being remembered as an adulteress. Then they made a terrible mistake and they asked the question, what do you say, Jesus? What do you say? I'll never forget it. Remember the rocks testifying. They walked over and they put me in his hands. They put me in his hand as if I was supposed to be the first stone that was supposed to be thrown. I almost preempted it. I thought, here we go. Here we go. But instead, he knelt down. And in the sand, he started touching the dirt. The God who was holy and sinless and perfect, Jesus touches dirty people. Jesus touches nasty people. Jesus touches your nasty stories, your filthy stories, our messed up lives. Jesus intervenes. Jesus said in John 8, 7, so when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and he said to them, he who is without sin amongst you, let him throw the stone at her first. Let him be the first one to throw the stone. And something happened. Something happened. Something miraculous happened. They dropped their stones. They all dropped their stones. Then those who heard it being convicted by their own conscience went out one by one, beginning with the oldest, even to the last, even to the youngest. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing in his midst. None of us, none of us stoned her. Jesus took me and he laid me down. All of them dropped their rocks except Jesus. When he was the only one qualified, who had never committed a sin, he could have thrown it, but instead he said, I give you the stone of forgiveness. Neither do I condemn you. 
Condemnation is Satan's number one weapon. When you bring your sin to the cross, you don't ever have to listen to it again. When you bring your sin to Jesus, you can lay it down. And you never have to pick it up again. You are born again. Through the blood of Jesus we are made new. We are cleansed and we are holy and we are pure. But we turn away from our wickedness. We turn away never to go back again. When Jesus comes into your life, he cleans you. You are righteous and you are forgiven. And I'll close with this. You are all at a point right now this morning in your lives. We're all at different points in our lives. We're all going through different situations. We're all going through different stuff. And maybe you're here this morning and you need Jacob's rock. Maybe you've been struggling and maybe you need an anointed dream. Maybe you need God to speak to you. Maybe some of you this morning are in a dry place. Maybe you're in a desert. Maybe you feel like it's dry and it's it's hot and there's no way out. And you need Moses' rock that brings refreshing and provision in your life. There is a refreshing that can come out of the rock for you today. Maybe you're here today and there's walls of resistance standing around you. Maybe you're facing walls of resistance. I want to pray this morning that every wall of resistance in your life will come tumbling down right now in Jesus' name. Hear the word of the Lord this morning. Walls still fall. Every wall you may be facing, walls still fall. Maybe you're here and you need Joshua's rock. Maybe Joshua's rock is what you need. The stone testified that walls still fall. Nothing is impossible for our God. Maybe you're a daughter and you need to forgive your father. Maybe you're a wife and you need to forgive your husband. Maybe you're a son that needs to forgive their fathers. Maybe your dad was never there. Maybe he's there in the flesh, but maybe he wasn't there emotionally. Maybe you need to forgive him this morning. I want to ask you to forgive him this morning. And Jesus says he'll set you free. I want to tell you this morning that walls still fall. Maybe you're facing a Goliath in your life. Maybe you're facing a giant. Maybe it's the giant of cancer. Maybe it's a giant of disease, of heart disease. Maybe we need to take up David's rock this morning. And I want to tell you that giants still fall. Maybe you're stuck in addiction and you're beating yourself up. Maybe you can't take it anymore. Maybe you're listening to the lies of the enemy and he's trying every and you're trying everything to get free. But I want to listen, I want you to listen to me this morning that you can put that rock down. I'm speaking about the rock with the blood and the rock from the man in the tombs. God can deliver you from whatever is tormenting you this morning. Whatever situation you may be facing, Jesus loves you. And he wants you to put that rock down. He values you. And I want to tell you this morning that you can't give up. There is a stone of forgiveness available to each and every one of us this morning. Whatever it is, whatever you've gone through, you might not be able to change it, but Jesus will make the best of it. He will turn everything around for your good. He has a plan for the rest of your life. When you stop running from God and we get close to him, he will start anointing the dreams that he has placed in our lives. God wants to pour out oil into your marriage, into your ministry, into your finances, and into your family. God wants to pour out provision into your life like you have never experienced before. But you've got to lay it down. We've got to lay down all the other rocks, receive the anointing, receive the anointed dream, take up the rock of forgiveness, and lay down the rock of condemnation in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen, amen. amen. Can we bring up our tithes and offerings before we pray? I'd like to just pray over this message and activate it over each and every one of us, but I'd just like you to sow a seed <coughs> excuse me, into the Word this morning. If you need forgiveness, if you need Jacob's rock, I'd like you to sow a seed onto the altar. If you need to take up David's rock this morning, if you need healing this morning, 
If you need Moses' rock or Joshua's rock, whatever it may be this morning, I'd like you to sow a seed into that this morning. Amen. Amen. We thank you, God, for everything you're doing in our lives. We thank you, Lord, that walls crumble in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that giants fall in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that you anoint our dreams and that you speak to us through dreams. Lord, that we will see the goodness of your glory, miracles, signs, and wonders in each and every one of our lives. We thank you, Lord, that you are here. We thank you that you move in our midst. We thank you, Lord, for this word this morning. Can I ask us all to stand? If you feel that God is calling you this morning, if you feel that the Lord has spoken to you this morning, don't run anymore. Don't run anymore. Just like Jacob, he stopped running and he laid his head down. I want you to stop running and I want you to receive the anointing of God. I want you to receive the oil of God over your life this morning. Stop resisting the Holy Spirit. Come and bow your knee at Calvary's cross. Let the blood be applied to your sin. Let the blood be applied to your situation. Let it be applied to your hurt and every broken place in your life. God is calling you home today. Jesus is calling you home this morning. You are not here by accident. You are here because God has a word for you. If you need Jesus this morning, we didn't do the prophetic words. You're going to come up afterwards. If you need Jesus this morning, if you need a fresh touch from heaven, I want you to lay it down. I want you to lay everything down this morning. I want you to give it to him this morning. Remember, as we pray, there is an angel in heaven with a pen. And it's dipped in the blood of Jesus. And he is writing your name according to the Lamb's book of life. Amen. Let's pray out loud. We activate it as we pray. Father, Father. can't hear you. Father, Father. I come to you this morning. morning. And I humbly confess confess. you as the Lord Lord. and the the Savior of my life. Father, I want to slow down. I want to lay my head down. And I want to receive an anointed dream. I believe in the blood you shed for me. I believe that what you did on the cross has bought me my forgiveness. I don't have to earn it. And I don't deserve it. But I receive it. I receive your cleansing today. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Father, that I am forgiven. Change me, transform me, heal me, deliver me. Lord, forgive me. Father, put a stone of forgiveness in my hand. Let me remember that I am forgiven, that I am a child of God. Thank you, Father, that you paid the price for me to live a life of abundance. Break me free. Break through every wall of resistance in my life life that is blocking me from my destiny every destiny destiny blocking wall fall in Jesus name Father I thank you that every giant in my life will fall right now in Jesus name thank you Lord that you chose me as for such a time as this I give you honor and praise and glory. Thank you, Father, for choosing me. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Give God a praise. Amen, amen, amen. I want us all to walk out of here this morning, not empty-handed, but I want you to spiritually walk out with the rock that you need. God has a rock that is testifying on your behalf today.
walk out with it. I have a song that we want to sing, um, I think, after the prophetic words. Yes. Um, Tanya, please come up. Sorry, guys, we were supposed to do it at the beginning of service, and I got totally, the rocks took over in Jesus' name. So Tanya's going to bring a word, and I think uh, Judy's got a word for us as well. Amen. Uh, yes, you need the mic. Sorry. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. And um, I just feel like this word is so appropriate and in season, even as um, Pastor Greg was talking today, because um, I heard the Spirit of the Lord was saying, no more cycles of addiction and even abuse. And as I was praying, God was showing me this picture of this IV um, tube that was in, inserted um, in the veins. And I saw the uncomfortableness of people walking around, you know, with this thing dragging it. And I just heard the Spirit of the Lord was saying that you are not going anywhere. And there is a constant feeding of addiction. And I asked the Holy Spirit, what types of addictions um, was he talking about and I heard the spirit of the Lord was saying anything that you feel you can't cope without anything that is actually placing a numbing in your flesh to help you cope with daily tasks and activities and I start to see how layers of addiction quiet the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to you Proverbs 25 verse 28 says A man without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. Titus 2 verse 11 to 12 says, For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in the present age. And Holy Spirit is asking you today, What is currently your crutch that you're pulling and and placing yourself upon? What is the name of the thing that you can't live without? What is feeding your flesh and your soul and keeping God in the background? And today, as Pastor Greg was speaking about that rock, even the rock of forgiveness today, there is just such a vulnerability that we need to open our hearts towards and tell God what is the thing that is keeping us away to push through what is the the addiction what is the name of that addiction that is really putting that place between you and God and today I just want to pray that we will be sober minded and watchful And that we will say that you are faithful and you will not let us be tempted even beyond our own abilities. But with the temptation, you will provide a way of escape, like you said in your word. I pray for wisdom that you will guide our steps and so that we can cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. And thank you that you say that when I am weak, you are strong. And just today, I want to say, like Pastor Greg was saying with that rock, today there is really an opportunity, there's a grace for you to put that addiction, that thing that you are so addicted to, like you feel you you can't go without. God is saying today, there is a grace for you to let go. And I pray even today, and I release that the eyes of your heart will be open, that the Holy Spirit will speak to you, and that there will just be that soft voice even that will tell you, today is the day that you need to lay it down. And I'm telling you, there's going to be a godly exchange and God is going to fill those empty spaces with godly things that you're going to stand up with. And that thing is going to become a testimony and your words is even going to make a way for you. And I just release this word of abundance over your life today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hi everyone. Um, This morning as I was preparing to come to church, um, the Holy Spirit showed me like silver partitions that was slotted in. And um, the Father said to me that we are moving into different slots in the spiritual realm. There are things changing in the spiritual atmosphere and um, we need to get in line to... Sure. Um, 
be able to operate in these spiritual slots that God is going to release soon. And the Father showed me, he said, we need to get our body, spirit, and soul in line so he can elevate you to move into these different slots. And the scripture came to mind where uh, Jeremiah was complaining about all the persecution he was um, dealing with. And God said to him, if you are getting tired of running with people, how are you going to run with horses? And as we worshiped this morning, I felt like the Holy Spirit was like a blanket around this church. And um, I really want to release um, a word of encouragement to you. Get in line, body, spirit, and soul, so God can elevate you into the slot in the spiritual realm which is coming, which is unavoidable. If you look around, things are changing. We are entering into the end times, and God says we need to slot into these spiritual realms, movements that are coming, and you need to get your spirit elevated so you'll be able to stand. Thank you. Amen. I want to end with a song. Remember the word was that if we don't praise him, they will. And listen, I don't want to rock to out praise me. I don't think any of us do. So Chad, you can cut the stream, please, and then we can uh, I'll just end off with, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he be gracious unto you. May he give you provision and help and pour out his blessing into every area of your life. May you advance and make progress in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people said, amen, amen. Amen. You guys can stand. Let's please, let's praise God with this last song. Just give Chad a second to get it up for us. And then please don't rush off. Grab a coffee. We'd love to fellowship with you. It's not too cold. We can put the heat on on the outside there. So we got the fire of the Holy Spirit in the house. We all go, we've all got to be warm after that service. Amen. 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 amen.